Hi, this is Nancy with On Point TV. We are going to do a live video on flying geese techniques. Now, I've got to preface this a little bit. We did this video on Wednesday. So if you watched the live video on Wednesday, or if you were the one of 150 people that watched it after it got posted, uh, you don't have to watch it. I do have one additional technique to show you, but it's going to be pretty much the same video. We don't know why, but the video after about 450 views went dark on YouTube. So people have been asking, where is it? It's a, is it my device? Is it? No, it wasn't you. It wasn't us either. It was YouTube. So we're not sure why it happened. But enough of that. We're going to talk to you about some flying geese techniques. Now, before I start, I was hoping, and we tried this last time too, and it worked out pretty well. I would like to know where you're watching from. So I love it when people post, you know, hi Nancy from Germany and hi Nancy from um, Ireland. I get that one a lot. So those of you that are out there, if you will kind of just say hi Nancy watching from, Bill is going to keep track just so that we can kind of see where everybody is watching from. So please don't be afraid to tell me where you're from. We're going to do flying geese and I'm going to show you this little book. So this is Tranquil Stars. This is a pattern designed by my sister Renee and she also wrote the pattern. I took that pattern and I am now getting it printed and we also have it on our website. So if you are interested in making this pattern, you can go to our website onpoint-tv Dot com go up to the shop and under shop you'll find like my learning to quilt book the um, pin cushion that I have some other patterns that we've done and now you'll also find the tranquil stars pattern it is available as an ebook right now so if you go on you can purchase it as an ebook and what that means is that we are then going to send you a download and then you're able to take that download you'll get an email and that email will say thank you for buying and you know list them all out and you can take those the 10 patterns download them and after you've downloaded them you can print them or you can watch them on any of your devices if you'd like to if you're interested in a hard copy version of it i did get it printed it's not going to be in a three ring binder like it is that i have it's going to be comb bound um and you'll be able to purchase that and i'll mail that out to you but i'm waiting for them to ship it to me so it'll be about a week so if you purchase it now i'll ship it out to you just as soon as i get them from the printer Okay. I want to show you the quilt that I did. So this is my sister did hers in traditional colors. Those are her favorites. This is what I did. This is my Tranquil Stars. So Bill is holding it up. He's our personal portable quilt hanger and he's really tall so that's kind of nice. So here's all the different blocks and today I'm going to talk to you about a flying goose block. There's quite a few of them all throughout the quilt. So this is a technique that you'll need to know to make the Tranquil Stars. If you were watching about a week and a half ago, we posted the half square triangle technique. There's tons and tons of half square triangles in this quilt. So on that video, I think I gave you four or five, four or five different ways of doing flying geese. Now I'm going to give you four different techniques for doing fly. For do, no, I did do four or five techniques for half square triangles. Now I'm going to do four techniques for doing flying geese. All right, so Bill gets to put this down and Bill is going to go keep track of how many of you are, how many different countries and locations and states that you're viewing from. So we're going to go right into flying geese. So with flying geese, there is a little bit of math involved and I'm going to start with my little paper charts that I made. So a flying goose block, how's that? Up a little bit more. Up a little bit. Perfect. Higher. This is a flying goose block. It consists of a large triangle that we call the goose and two smaller triangles that some call the skies and I call them wings. I don't know and I don't think it matters. The basic math for a flying goose block is to take the finished size of the flying goose and add one and a quarter inches to it. So for what we're going to do, we're going to make a four, two by four finished flying goose. So I took the four, added one and a quarter inches. So I need to cut one square that's five and a quarter inches. Then you're going to cut the wings, the smaller ones. You're going to take the finished size divided by two. So that would be two inches 
and add seven eighths of an inches inches to it. So that's going to be the math that we're going to use. We're going to make two by four finished flying geese. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. For the traditional technique, we're going to start with a square. So this is a square that is five and a quarter inches, and I need to cut that on the diagonal twice. Like I said, this is the very traditional technique. I'm going to show you other techniques where you would not have to do this. Cutting it on the diagonal twice, a little bit strange angle here for me to be cutting from. That gives me four quarter square triangles. Then I need for each one of those a square that was cut to and seven eighths inches cut on the diagonal once to yield two half square triangles. So when I take this to my sewing machine, I will have my quarter square triangles and the two smaller square triangle, half square triangles that make up a flying goose. So this is basically what they're going to look like. I'm going to stack those up and then we'll go to the sewing machine with those. That technique you're pre-cutting. The difficulty with that is that you end up with that bias edge that we've talked about in half square triangles. Bias edges can be kind of stretchy, so they can be a little bit more difficult to sew. One tip if you do choose to do this method is to spray size your block first. So here is another one. This is what we call the no so the no waste method and it uses the same measurement. So again, I have a 5 and a quarter inch square. On the half square the squares that are going to be my half square triangles, I am going to draw instead of cutting, I'm going to draw that line. So on this one I just drew one line. Here I drew three lines. That would be if you do not have a sewing machine whose needle can move to the right to create a scant quarter inch, or if you have that um, the foot that is just a little bit wider and it really doesn't give you a good scant quarter inch, then you can draw those additional sewing lines. So the center is a cut line. These are sewing lines. We're going to set this up to go to my machine. I'm going to take this, I'm going to lay that down, then I'm going to take my second one, lay it down so that they connect right here in the middle. And I love how these lines are continuous. That tells you that's in the proper position. I'm going to take a couple of pins and place them. Then take this over to my sewing machine and that'll be our second one. The next one, you need to come back up, Athena, is called connecting corners. So the connecting corners technique is really easy because there's not much math involved. You don't have to know that math, but it does can, I should say, it does not always waste fabric, but it can, and I'm going to show you how to save some fabric. So for a two by four finished flying goose with the connecting corners technique, I'm going to take the rectangles and I'm going to cut them the length of my finished flying goose plus a half inch and the height which is two inches. So I'm going to cut four rectangles that are two and a half inches by four and a half inches. The squares you're going to take the height of the finished flying, flying goose and you're going to add the half inch for your seam allowance and you're going to cut eight of them to create four flying geese. So for that I have my rectangles here that have been cut right there and then on the back of the squares again instead of cutting these first I'm just going to draw one line and that one line is to sew on. With the last techniques that one line was the cut line. In the case of the connecting corners it's actually our sew line. So I'm going to put some pins in there. Oh, on this one I did not draw the back. Let me take this. So this is how I draw on the back. I like to put my fingers right on the fabric. I'm using a permanent marking pen because I'm going to sew right on that line. That gives me my sew line for the connecting corners. All right, come back up. 
I want to show you a fourth technique for cutting your flying geese. I did not do this one on the Wednesday, the last Wednesday, and I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I showed you how to use a die cutting machine. We use the Sizzix Big Shot to cut half square triangle units. I thought, well, I should actually show you one of the machine techniques for cutting flying geese also. This time, I'm going to use the Gemini. So this is the Gemini Junior. I really like this one because he's a little bit more compact. He is, Athena actually went and got it for me. And she's like, that's heavier than I thought it would. It is kind of heavy and that's because it's really, really sturdy. So we're going to use our Gemini Junior, which is an electronic cutting machine. You don't have to crank it through. So if you don't have a lot of strength in your hands, this could be the machine for you. And I'm going to use their Build a Block die sets. So the build a block die sets give you the squares, the quarter square triangles, and the half square triangles to make three, six, eight, nine, twelve, all these different sizes of blocks. And then they actually give you a kind of an example of things that you can make. So this is the build a block. Later on, I'll be showing you a few weeks from now when we're doing um, elongated triangles, I'll show you their other die cutting set. So with this one, here is my quarter square triangles. I get the six, four, three, one and a half, two, and one. I am using the four inch finished die for the quarter square triangle. And this is for the half square triangles. I'm gonna use the two inch finished there. So I've got my die, my fabric prepped. Keep in mind that with the Gemini machine, you can cut through eight layers of fabric. And that's really important because many of the times when you're using these wafer thin dies, you can't do that. The dies that are made by the um, Crafters Companion Company for Gemini that are made for fabric are actually made with a long, with a higher um, cut blade, and that blade is made with a stronger than normal um, metal. So you can use regular smaller ones, but you wouldn't be able to go through eight layers. I have my spacer plate, I can't remember what that's actually called, a clear cutting acrylic plate. Then I have my metal. My dies are face down, so they will cut into the metal. And then I'm going to layer it with one more acrylic. And now I'm going to put it in the machine and you get to hear how strong it is. So as it goes in, it's going to make noise. So I might have to stop talking, which that's not very easy for me. When it's going in, I'm not touching it. It's doing it on its own. And you can hear it work. That was a good sound. Snap, crackle, pop is what it does when these are cut. There is my four quarter square triangles. And here are my half square triangles that'll go on the end. What's really cool about this is when we're using them, yes, we do have to be careful of the bias edge. I gotta get this fabric to separate. Okay, I had used, oh, I know why it is. Well, this while you do up. that, Linda okay. asked, are the dies compatible to other machines? The dies are compatible to other machines as long as it's a very strong machine. So machines like the Sizzix Big Shot, that is a very strong machine. It can do this also. So when you're using the dies, I love that they've got the blunt ends. So when you layer that on top of the half square or the quarter square triangle, you see how it lines up perfectly right there? That's really fabulous. So we're gonna now take these. I'm gonna need two of these. I'm just gonna make a couple of them. There's my pieces for my half square triangles with that. I'm gonna set this to the side because we'll be coming back to this. And we're gonna go to my sewing machine, okay? Do, 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 do. So Tina's gonna follow. Oh, wait a minute, as long as we're here, hold on a second. Come back to over there. One of the viewers from last Wednesday said, hey, what's all those hanging behind you? Are those all quilt tops? Yeah. Those are all quilt tops. I'm a quilter, I have UFOs. So yeah, this is just some of the quilt tops that I have hanging, so. They look pretty though, don't they? Yep, I thought you'd think so. Okay, come on back this way. Gonna go to my sewing machine. 
And I got my iron set up right here. Oops, you know what I don't have? Please back up, back up. I didn't get a pair of scissors. I didn't get a pair of scissors. There. There, I'm gonna use my pies. So this is a pair of Kai scissors. They're the 7000 series. They're really, really sharp. I absolutely love these. So, all right. So I'm gonna push the iron out of the way so Athena can come in. And we're gonna go to our sewing machine. So I'm gonna start with stitch editing and I'm gonna move my needle over so that it's set up to my scant quarter inch size. Oop, one more bob, there. That gives me a good scant quarter inch for my machine. We're gonna start with the first one that we did. So let's turn on the light over here. The first one that we did was where I pre-cut the quarter square triangles and I'm gonna use two triangles on either side. So starting with one, it's important to line it up right there. Okay, so it's all lined up and see here a little bit at the top that tells you that kind of gives you the clue that yep you cut it the right size because you can see that from here to here is that um, quarter inch. I'm gonna start with a little piece of fabric. I hope this is not one I'm using as a leader and working with my needle in the down position I'm gonna chain pieces. As I get to the end, I'm gonna pick up my next one. So I'm gonna make two of each. Line that guy up down here on the bottom. He's sticking out at the top, that quarter of an inch. All right, so that's the one where I pre-cut the squares. Next, I'm gonna do the one where I did them same size but I did not pre-cut the squares. This is similar to where you do this with half square triangles, drawing it instead of cutting it, and I'm lining up my edge on the cut line, and this is my sew line. So if you need to, if you cannot move your needle over, you'll want to draw a sew line. Get to the end of that, and need to get my leader so I can turn this around. Oops. So on my leader, because I need to sew on the other side of that line. There, turn that baby around. I'm gonna take my pins out now because it's not gonna go anywhere on me. So on the other side of that line. All right, now I'm gonna work on the ones that we cut with the Gemini. Same idea as our first one, where we start with the pre-cut quarter square triangle, piece on a half square triangle, but this time I'm just gonna match that up so it matches right there to the end. And so, let's do another one because we did two of everybody else and it wouldn't be fair if we didn't continue. Oops, be nice if I lined that up properly. Okay. All right, and the last one is the connecting corners. So Athena's got to back up a smidge because to do the connecting corners, I actually need my needle position to be right in the middle. I'm not doing a quarter inch seam this time. I am sewing right on the line. I'm going to do the second one. Now, one of the reasons that people are not big fans of connecting corners is because it can waste fabric. So I'm going to show you how to not really waste fabric. Take that one that you just did. So I just sewed on the line. Now I'm going to sew a foot distance away from that line. And I'll explain why when we go to the ironing board. So on the outside edge again, I'm just going to sew a foot distance. So I'm lining up my sewn edge over here on the left-hand side of my foot. Sew that and then grab my leader again and then we'll back up and go to the ironing board. 
Okay, so I gotta take all my pieces parts so that we can press them. Right here. Okay, I got my little wool mat. I love this little guy. Um, you can find this at pretty much any of your um, quilt shops at this point. This is fabulous. When I first got it, I thought maybe it was an extravagance. No, it's not. It's a necessity. All right. So these are the first ones where, that I did that I cut the triangles first. I'm going to always set my seam first and then flip up the triangle. I'm going to do my second one. Set the seam first. Flip up. Now I've got my triangle pressed. Now with this one, we'll be adding another triangle to the side. The second one that I did was called the no waste method. So with that, that's the one where I put the large square with the small squares and I sewed on either side of that long, tri long squares. I gotta tell you, when I first learned this technique, it was kind of magical. I could not believe that this actually creates flying geese. It was so cool. Now I'm gonna cut on that center line and now press. So I'm gonna take and press those triangles up and do it to the second one. This is gonna make four flying geese, this technique does. And it's cool because you can use just the traditional sizes if you're Doing a pattern that says cut a large square and then cut it on the diagonal and cut smaller squares and cut them on the diagonal, you have the measurements that you need for the no waste method. And what's when you know that it's done right, when it, I don't know, it kind of looks like a heart to me, where it's kind of, you know, a heart, right? So I'm gonna put those to the side. The next one we did was the ones that I cut with my Gemini. So those are like where I pre-cut the first ones. Again, I'm just going to set my seam. So with the ones that are cut from the Gemini, it's kind of cool because you don't get the dog ear on the outside because that was already cut with the die. Okay. Set those to the side. And the last one is the connecting corners. Remember with connecting corners, we sewed on our drawn line and then I did an extra seam here. I'm going to take and cut between the extra seam and the sew line. Now that is a smaller than quarter inch seam allowance, but that's okay. As long as it's at least an eighth of an inch, it is going to be strong enough. And what I'm left with is this little guy. So instead of throwing him away, if I open him up, I've got a little half square triangle. Now that half square triangle probably is not used in whatever quilt is telling you to use the connecting corners technique, but it's not like you couldn't use it in something else. So I love that it's pre-sewn. So somewhere down the line, I'll think to myself, you know what, I need a whole bunch of little half square triangles. And I'll think, hey, I've got a whole bunch of them pre-sewn. So press this little guy and put him in my little pre-sewn half square triangle pile to use someday, all right? So now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine. Um, Vicki just asked, how do you know it's a him, not a her? Because you keep on using the word him. Who's the, oh, the flying goose? Yeah. I don't know. I just think of flying geese as- As, as men? As men. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's the Canadian geese. And, okay, now. Now you're going to know a little bit more about me than you need to know. I was raised on a farm, and the 10 kids in my family, my parents had 10 kids. We lived on a farm. I was the number eight of 10, and when we first moved to the farm, my mom decided we were going to get one of every animal known to man, and one of the animals she got was a goose, and he was mean and nasty, and he pooped everywhere. So I'm not really a big fan of geese as a general rule. That's probably not why I call them a boy, but they are. So my geese are boys. You can call them whatever you would like them to be. Okay, can we go back to sewing now? Yes. Okay, thank you. TMI? Okay. Yes. All right, so as long as we still have our needle in the middle, we're going to continue with our connecting corners technique. So those are the ones that the line is drawn right in the middle 
and we're gonna sew on that line or just honestly a smidge to the outside of it. I'm gonna grab my next one and there's my connecting corners. Connecting corners can be a lot of fun for a lot of cool techniques. Um, if you, right now, very popular are patterns by Elizabeth Hartman. All of her patterns are technically connecting corners where you're cutting lots of different sizes. Pam Bono techniques, Pam has um, passed away now, um, but she used to do some really, really cool designs that were all connecting corners. All right, so I wanted to put my leader in there so that I can do that extra line of stitching so that I'm not gonna waste any fabric. This will create my extra little half square triangle. So now you make me think, Vicki, are the half square triangles girls or are the flying goose, are half square triangles also boys? I'm not really sure. Okay, so this is the one that did I did with the Gemini and you can see because his dog ear is already gone. I'm gonna add my second one again. I love, you see here where it lines up here? Now look at it up at the top. It even lines up at the top. I do like start sewing. Oops, all right, I think need Athena to back up because I'm not doing connecting corners anymore. I need to move my needle over. Dee, 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 dee. 2.8, okay. So now I'm gonna sew with my scant quarter inch seam allowance. It's a little bit flighty there at the beginning of that seam. And my, oh, there it is. So there's my other one. From cut from my Gemini. Line him up. There. Chain piece. This is the guy that I cut the half square triangles and the flying geese in half. Because this is so pointy, I do like to start in the middle of the half square triangle, which I can't really do uh, this time. I should have mentioned it last time because of the position of the needle, but don't let your machine grab that point. Some machines can have the tendency to grab that point and pull your fabric down inside, and that is just a big old mess. All right, last one on this. And then we'll go to our cool magical technique with the no wasting. All right, last one to take the one that looks like a heart. And now you take one of your squares and place it so that the sew line is going right between the heart, okay? And you're gonna start sewing right there in that valley. This valley should be a quarter of an inch away so that way you know it's right. So when I start, my needle will actually tuck right into that valley and I'll go all the way down. So here's my second half of the heart. Line it up, tuck it right into the valley. And then I need to cut this off so I can sew on the other side. Last two seams. So the other side of that draw the cut line that I drew. Alright, we cut that and then we're gonna go back to the ironing board. Okay. Backing up, backing up. Okay. Alright, I wish I could be left-handed, but I can't. You good. Okay. So first with my connecting corners, just like before, press that. I'll do that guy later, so we only have to do one now. Cut that on the diagonal. I can press that to create my half square triangle. But there is my beautiful half square, my beautiful flying goose, who might be a boy. We don't really know. This is the one that I cut with the Gemini, and I know that because my dog ears are already cut off on that. And you see there where I wiggled a little bit at the beginning of that. Okay, there's two. My next one is where I cut the 
half square triangles first. Set the seam, then press the seam. The little steam burst. And this one, you know, so here's the difference. With the Gemini, the dog ears are cut off. These are called dog ears and even at the top. Now the truth is, is I'm gonna trim them anyhow to make sure they're the right size, but that's one way that you know it's the Gemini version instead of the cut the triangle version. Now this is the magic version, the no waste fabric. Press that seam first. Cut on the drawn line. and then press him over and you will get four of these. So one, two, and then the other one would be three, four, but I'm not gonna press that because I think you get the idea, all right? So our sewing and our pressing is done. It's time to go back to the table to show you a couple ways to trim these. So back it up, back it up. So to do this trimming technique, I'm going to use a square ruler. Let me put paper behind it so you can see. So this is my OmniGrid. I love my OmniGrid rulers. They are honestly my ruler of choice. Everybody has a favorite. This is mine. This is my nine and a half. Now for the trimming of these, you need to have a square ruler. So you see here the one one of the square ruler and that diagonal line. It is a must that you have that. So that's almost always only in square rulers. So this is how you trim it. You take your flying goose, and I lay it down so that he's flying toward me. So that goose is pointing toward me. Lay my ruler down with the diagonal. That diagonal of the ruler is on that diagonal seam. And in this case, this is a two by four inch finished half square triangle. So that means right now he should measure four and a half by two and a half. I place the two and a quarter inch dot right there on the nose of the flying goose. So I've got the two and a quarter on the nose, the diagonal going right up that seam, trim, and then trim right here. It always seems like it's funny to me that they always get fat in the middle. I don't know why. Now I'm going to turn it. And now I'm going to measure to the size that I need to cut it to. I need to cut this to four and a half by two and a half. You cannot use the diagonal on your ruler for this little part. You just have to trust that you did it right the first time. And then you have a beautiful half square triangle. Now I want to show you another technique. This is a ruler by Block Lock. So can you see that? Now I showed you with the half square triangles, the block lock ruler for trimming half square triangles. It's very cool. Um, and what I like about the half square triangle one, not only is it really cool, it's got the groove that I'll show you and stuff, but like I have the six inch block lock half square triangle trimmer. That means I can trim half square triangles from six inch all the way to a half inch if I wanted to using that ruler. With the flying geese block lock rulers, it's kind of like you get to do this one. You can only trim these to the two and a two by four inch finished half square triangle. Now they have a whole bunch for all the different sizes. So if you were doing a quilt that had lots of flying geese, all of the same size, I really think you wanna look into getting a block lock flying geese trimmer. It really makes the process so much easier easier but it is just an extra tool in your toolbox you do not need it you saw that i could do that with my half square try with my um square ruler but just know this exists and i want to show you how it works keep in mind that they do have all of the measurements for all of the cutting that you would need there we go all the directions so they give you a lot of information for using this but this is how it's used it's so simple you place the goose down, and on the back of the block locks is a little groove, and that's where the seam goes. So just like that, he's in place. 
just like that. I don't have to think about where my diagonal is. I don't have to think about where the nose of the goose is. Turn them around and trim. So again, if you're doing a quilt that has a whole bunch of one size flying geese, I think that getting the block lock ruler would probably be advantageous to you, but that's a decision you have to make. All right, we're done. So that was four different techniques for making flying geese. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in making the Tranquil Stars pattern, it is available on our website, onpoint-tv.com. Go to the shop and you'll see that and the Learning to Quilt and the other patterns. You can get the ebook or you can get the hard copy book. And I am wondering how many different countries did we have viewing, Bill? Uh, different countries? Yeah, name them off. Uh, USA, Kuwait. Kuwait? Uh, Canada. Canada. And the Netherlands. And the Netherlands. All right, yeah, so we, we only had four this time. So lots of times we get different ones. How many different states? Did anybody say what state they yep. were from? I got an in, uh, Illinois, South mm. Bend. South okay. Bend's not a in state. In That's in in Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> uh, Michigan. Go Michigan. Montana. Montana. California. Um, and Washington State. Washington was California. State and California. So thank you all very much for watching. Um, for those of you that didn't catch it on Wednesday and tried to catch it later, I hope that you're good with this so that you can watch it. Thank you all. Honestly, it was really cool seeing how many people commented saying, hey, I can't watch the video. I think that's kind of cool. That means you want to watch the video, and that means a lot to me. I'm all done.